Analyze the market with a ruler. I'm going to show you how in this week's Stock Scores Market Minutes for October 15th, 2012. A reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can receive instant updates when I have uploaded a new video. Plus, I encourage you to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter. The address is on screen, stockscores.com slash newsletters dot ASP. All right, what do I mean when I say analyze the market with a ruler? Well, trend lines are very reliable indications of future market price moves, and they work particularly well when you analyze the overall market indexes, things like the S&P 500 and Dow 30. And when you do that on an intraday basis going back a month, you can start to take advantage of the short-term price gyrations that we have seen in the market. Now we define trend lines by pullbacks against the trend. We want to draw a line across the pullback lows in the case of an uptrend or the pull up highs in the case of a downtrend and I'll show you this in just a moment. Control of the market is changing when the trend line is broken. Now we can apply this to the short term using those intraday charts that I spoke of or to the very long term looking at weekly or even monthly charts. What time frame you approach the market with is really based on how much time you have to trade the market. If you have 15 minutes a month, well then you're going to look at the monthly chart. If you can analyze and trade the market daily, then you want to look to the intraday chart. All right, so here is a chart of the S&P 500 ETF over the last two months. And you can see that I have drawn green and red lines on this chart. And they're really drawn at inflection point highs and lows. Now you can see here now that there are some arrows on screen. And those are our inflection points. So the arrows pointing up are inflection point bottoms. And the arrows pointing down are inflection point highs. And they're really like playing connect the dots. You find those inflection points, and these are price points where price changes direction, either stops going up and starts going down, or stops going down and starts going up. Now at these inflection points, there's really a vote being cast by the market. The buyers and sellers are changing control in the very short term. And we can draw our trend lines across those inflection points. Now ultimately, we look to the trend lines being broken. So for example, the upward trend line that was in place through August was broken around the third week of August and that sent the market into its down or sideways trend. We then had an upside breakout through the red downward trend line early in September and that led to two weeks of pretty abnormal strength for the market. And then more recently in the from the third week of September onward, we had that break of the upward trend and we went into a downward trend. Then a break of that downward trend and we had a few days of upward moves. And more recently, right now, you can see that the downward trend line that has been in place for the last week or two was broken today. And that implies that the market should now move higher in the next little while. All right, let's get on to the analysis. And this week, I'm going to stay with these short-term charts and focus in on how these charts are looking on the 30-day, 60-minute time frame. And focusing really in on channels, because channels are important for what the market is doing. So you can see that I've drawn a red line across the tops, a green line across the bottoms. And this is the channel that's been building over the last month and a half. You can see that it's more or less sideways with a slight downward bias. We came down to the bottom of the channel on Friday of last week, and today we bounced off of that. We've broken the very short-term downward trend line, and we should now move back up toward the red line in the near term. On the Toronto Stock Exchange, we have something pretty similar, a little bit more of a downward bias to the channel, meaning a little bit more pessimism in the Canadian market, but we also bounced off of the lower boundary of this channel today and therefore we should continue higher over the next few days as we move up toward the upper boundary. Now the pessimism is still in place so it's only a short term move that I expect to be up but the longer term trend which is down will take some time to reverse and we don't want to get too enthusiastic until the market is actually able to break through the red line on that chart. All right, here's the Russell 2000, which is an indication of the smaller cap stocks that trade in the U.S. And again, much like the Canadian market in a downward sloping channel, 
at the bottom of the channel right now. So we should expect it to bounce. May go up for three, four, five days. It could just go sideways for a while. What's important is that we're in the lower boundary of that channel, so the upside potential is better than the downside potential in the near term. TLT is the Treasury Bond Fund, and it's an important one because when money is looking to hide, it hides in treasuries. And we can see that money started to hide in treasuries around the middle of last week when the market sold off. But that particular index has hit resistance and is getting stuck there. So we haven't really got a strong cue that money wants to come out of the stock market in, into the safety of treasuries. And so this is a relatively bullish chart for stocks. I wouldn't say it's incredibly bullish, but it does help the stock market a little bit that money is not running back to the safety of treasuries. The US dollar has been moving more or less sideways with a slight upward bias, and that's not great for stocks because it makes US stocks more expensive. It also makes commodity prices more expensive, and that's why we've seen commodity prices fall off. I think what's happening here is, although the US is printing lots of money, so too is everyone else, or at least most everyone else. Certainly Europe is printing money, and that implies that while the US may be not a great place to have value invested, it is a better place than the rest. And I think the market's starting to realize that, and we sh that shows up a little bit more in the gold chart, which had a pretty strong selling day today. And that is, I think, a positive if you are looking for a, uh, if you want to avoid inflation. In other words, the market is saying, well, inflation won't be as bad as maybe we expected. But keep in mind that this is a pretty short-term chart. I think gold's a bit oversold here and could bounce back. But uh, the message is pretty clear. The market is not so concerned about the U.S. dollar going down as much as it had been when the U.S. Fed announced QE3. Oil has been in a sideways range for some time. In a longer term sense, it's stuck under a downward trend line, but it is slowly building some optimism here, and it may test and break through that downward trend line in the next little while. What that means is that I think the market is starting to get a little bit more optimistic about an improving global economy, which of course oil is the driver of that. It may also be that just political tensions in the Middle East have people worried about supply of oil and that may be helping oil. One thing is for certain, the bias over the last two weeks has been with slightly upward moving and I think that we should watch this chart closely because it is an indicator of what the world, or pardon me, what the market thinks about the world economy. So my outlook right now is I'm neutral on everything. In the very short term, I think U.S. and Canadian stocks will rally. I'm talking about for a few days, maybe a week, before it hits that upper boundary of its channel. Gold suffered a breakdown today. I think that's an important one to watch, but it's also pretty oversold, so I think it could bounce back. And oil is in that sideways trading pattern. So my very short term outlook, slightly optimistic on stocks, kind of pessimistic on gold, and pretty much sideways on oil. The markets will likely make a short-term bounce back from oversold conditions this week, but work has to be done to overcome the pessimism that has been in place since mid-September. Trade with a short-term outlook. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for October 15th, 2012. Have a great week in the market and trade well.